Hi guys! Have you ever wondered what games user research means? Hi, my name is Jonathan Dankoff. I'm the user research manager at WB Games Montreal. Hi, I'm Jason Sklar. I am a, a user researcher and user experience consultant. I've been working in the industry for about 15 years. And right now I have my own consultancy. I work with a variety of companies making PC and mobile games. What are video games? Well, video games, you know, for people my grandparents' age, like yourselves, are very different than they now than what they were maybe say 20 or 30 years ago. These days, of course, you see them on TV even if you don't play them yourselves or you hear your kids or grandkids talking about them. Um, and video games are basically games that are played on electronic devices uh, either by yourself or with friends. And they're super popular ways for kids and adults to spend their time uh, engaging socially with each other or just pursuing their own dreams um, and activities. Funny you should ask, Zeta. Uh, video games are an interactive medium. Uh, think of them like movies that you can control, I think would be something that you might understand. So if you could watch a movie and then decide how the characters reacted or uh, what they did next, uh, that might be something that you liked, I think. And what do you do in these video games? I try to help make it so that video games can be played by everybody. So my goal is to make sure that I get rid of any of the barriers that would stop you from being able to enjoy a game. So you know how you love Tetris because you understand how the buttons work? That's because somebody made sure that the rules were clear, that you were able to understand how it played out. Um, now take that and make it a lot more complex, make the rules a lot more difficult, and I try to make sure that anybody, whether it's you, whether it's your nephew, uh, whether it's your grandson, that everyone can play these games and have a good time uh, and just really, you know, have fun. I used to do a lot of research uh, with a company called Microsoft Games and we would spend a lot of our time watching people play video games and quietly observing them and taking notes. We would also run um, large groups of people and have them fill out questionnaires. And this is the way that we learned a lot about how people played the games that people were making. I read in the newspapers that children are addicted to video games. Is it your job to make them addicted? Absolutely not. I think it's our job to make sure that the games that they play are fun and that they understand. And I think that children, you know, should be able to explore this medium and they should be able to play games. But I also think, obviously, that, uh, you know, like I do with my son, it's important for any parent to pay attention to what their kids are doing, what they're consuming, whether it's on the internet, whether it's a video game, whether it's a magazine. You know, um, I think there's a lot of personal responsibility involved. Uh, that said, of course, there is an ethical responsibility for us as people that make video games particularly when it comes to children's products, to treat them, you know, with the uh, respect that they deserve and understand that kids are maybe more susceptible to some messaging than others. So that's something that maybe isn't part of the games user research. It's not something that I would do myself, but I think it's very important and something to keep in mind. So our job isn't to make games more addictive. Our, our job is to make games more engaging, enjoyable, and fun. And the reason why we want to do this is that games fulfill a lot of needs um, and desires for people. Not only are they a form of social engagement with your peers and family, uh, but they can also be very educational, uh, learning how to work as a team, learning how to deal in appropriate ways within a set of rules in competitions. Uh, and also you can learn concepts like math and science, uh, increase your vocabulary through word games like Boggle and Scrabble. And so the idea is, is that um, you shouldn't have to have any kind of specific expertise to get into these games and play them. Um, the idea is, is that, like for instance, books or movies. For books, you need to learn how to read. Well, we all learn how to read at an early age, and so we can enjoy the world of books. Uh, movies, we sit down in front of a screen and we watch for an hour or two. Uh, it doesn't require much what we call barrier to entry. And for us, what our job is, is to help, it, help people who make these games and these experiences as accessible and enjoyable to as a wide audience as, po as possible. And so that people who aren't maybe as comfortable with the technological devices or the small screens, uh, or the fact that I have to interact in real time with these um, applications and software, to make them feel more comfortable with them so that they can engage, learn, socialize, and play uh, with their friends and families. Isn't it hard to see people having a bad time? Doesn't it make them violent sometimes? That's a really interesting question. 
The uh, violence in video games has been, is definitely newsworthy when things like that happen and we see about them in the media. Uh, and there have been some studies that link aggression uh, and playing certain types of games. But there have been a lot more studies linking cognitive growth and ability, um, retaining your reasoning ability, especially as you age, by playing certain types of games that keep the brain active. There are a lot of positive stories about how games really improve the lives of people. And not only do they improve the lives of the people who play the games, uh, but they can also be used to help uh, with learning simulation. So for instance, um, medical doctors or doctors in training can practice on uh, elaborately constructed video games to perform sometimes experimental surgeries or to sometimes perform routine but life-saving treatments in a way that won't ever harm the participants and they can actually learn a lot. And you can read about things like this in all sorts of areas which we call serious games. So we have, there's military training, there's training people how to, for instance, conduct um, ethical training uh, compliance for if you're handling, say, sensitive information at companies. And what we found is because uh, we're in an age where people grow up playing games, using games can be an effective way to teach people how to um, learn new skills. So, I mean, it is true that with the research that I do, we end up seeing a lot of people that are having a hard time. But I think that for the most part, they understand that this is part of the process, and they know that they're playing games that aren't finished yet. And so they don't get violent, certainly. But, you know, we, we do see people who can get frustrated. Uh, and we have guidelines, right? We won't let somebody smash their head against a wall for more than a few minutes. Once we realize there's an issue, we'll help them get past it, and then we'll move on to the next objectives of the study. So, no. What is the link between your job and your studies? Is there a school of games user research? Well, I went to graduate school and I studied legal decision making. So I studied how judges and juries understand complex scientific information. Like, for instance, what does a DNA match mean in a criminal case? Or how do you understand different economic models of damages in a civil trial? And so really what I was fascinated uh, with was how do people, lay people, um, understand and make decisions based on information that might be outside their normal realm of expertise? And can we make them better consumers of this information? And a lot of what I did then, observing people, having them answer surveys, uh, translates very well to what I do now, which is games, a lot of games, we want them to have very complex systems so that there's depth to them, so that people can really engage and get into them and it can retain them and keep them around. We don't want very, we don't just want shallow experiences, we want deep experiences and deep experiences are often layered and have the complexity. And so as a user experience person right now, I have to help teams understand what is the right rate at which to bring people into this complexity and so that they have a fun time discovering, struggling, and progressing, and ultimately feeling like they've accomplished something in the end. And to me, that's really, you know, kind of the most direct link between what I studied and what I'm doing now. So to be honest, my studies really, they taught me how to work in a team, they taught me how to collaborate, they taught me how to structure ideas. Uh, but you know, like you guys back in the day, uh, when you were learning the fur trade, what it really was, was was getting your hands dirty, uh, trying new things, and figuring out how you could move forward. Uh, you know, th this field was not super advanced when I started, and so I had to do a lot of stuff myself, and we figured it out as we went, and we, you know, kept what worked well, we threw out what didn't work, and we plowed forward. And now it's amazing to see the young people that are coming into this space and that I'm working with who are absolutely brilliant, and they have, you know, amazing training, and they understand concepts that didn't even really exist when I started. So it's, it's a cool job because there's always a lot of fresh faces, and, and it's something with a lot of potential moving forward for the future.